Hey everyone, Dr. Baron Grutter here. I'm going to make a quick video. I had someone reach out to me with a question about making an apical surgical guide. And so I'm not going to show the entire process because most of it can be found in other process in other videos and whatnot. So I just want to start, jump into the kind of important parts of the video. So first of all, in at this point, uh, he's already gone through and determined where he wants his um, drill to advance. So for instance, let me uh, get out of this view and we can look, it's this premolar that he's planning to do surgery on. You can see it a little bit better right up here. And um, let's go ahead and straighten this out. And you can see this is the area he wants to clip and do surgery on. So anyway, I'm, he's designed all that. He's positioned this implant. He just had an issue with how to incorporate the guide tube into his surgical guide so that it uh, extends down all the way down there and can help him and can work. So uh, basically all I'm doing is um, I did go through the process of going to the guide panel and I made sure the upper model was set. Let's go ahead and hide this CT scan because that's not really helpful for us. Let's hide this. In fact, let's even hide the implant. Well, the implant's fine because it gives us an idea of why I'm doing some of these things. Anyway, so here is the upper model. And sorry, I'm at home right now. I've got kids in the background. I'm sorry if you can hear them. Um, so uh, I went through define the insertion uh, direction, which is what we do to... Uh, create the undercuts in whatever manner we want. Sometimes when you're look, working with really flared anterior teeth, it's nice to be able to set your own model like this orientation as opposed to the traditional straight up and down. So, but anyway, in this case, it was pretty simple. I just made the, the insertion access just like this and it generated this model, okay? So you can see that the undercuts have been filled in uh, pretty straightforward. But it is important for what I'm about to show you next. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the original model. Well, let's go ahead and leave that on there um, so you can kind of see the difference. Hopefully it's not too confusing. And so here's where his implant is. Now I've gone ahead and I already drew where I wanted my curve to be. Uh, let's go ahead and click on it. I like to round the curve a little bit just so that I get a little bit of a buccal lingual more stability. If it's just the posterior, I fear that it's going to rock a little bit. So, I mean, I honestly might even go all the way to the canine or lateral just to have that extra stability, be able to put my finger on the other side of the mouth, hold it in there, but to each their own. Um, so the, here's where I drew my line. Pretty simple. I don't, I try not to spend a lot of time on this. That's your eye on you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Christmas break. Uh, I'm sure you heard my son talking right there. Anyway, um, so the uh, the guide is all marked, and so when I just hit create surgical guide, it's going to give you an issue because it's like, hey, the you know the guide tube is not in you know inside the guide and whatever. Who cares? Just yes, that's fine. So this is the generated guide. Let me change the color here so we get a little better contrast, a little bit of a difference. Um, hopefully you can see that well. Uh, my laptop is running on battery power at the moment so my screen's pretty dark there i brightened it up hopefully that's yeah i think you'll see that so here's the guide and now that that obviously isn't going to work because the there, there's no guide tube extent you know included so what i'm going to do here is pretty simple but first thing is i know that this guide tube could actually extend all the way to the tissue or to the undercut so in that place in that case you know, you might want to uh, mess with your guide tube dimensions a little bit. You might want to say, oh, well, this guy, you know, this height is not very long. So if let's make it a little bit, um, let's make it a little bit, eh, come on, I know. Let's make it uh, 4.5 4 mil, 4 millimeters. Let's try that. And now it's extending, it's actually touching the undercut model there, just barely, and it's soft tissue, and it's also undercut, so I think I'll be fine. But go ahead and make it as long as possible, you get as much trajectory control. You could even decrease the offset to hug it up even closer, but honestly, I'd like to have at least a four to four and a half millimeter guide tube. So let's say I was able to make it seven millimeters, well in that case, I... You're, if you're using a metal sleeve, you're only going to get guidance for that first four to five millimeters because that's the length of the metal tube. So in that case, I would decrease my offset. 
if you're using a guy, you know, uh, just the printed tube, in this case, I'm assuming he is, um, then the whole length of the tube is going to be providing guidance. So the longer it is, the better it is in a sense, other than getting access with your drill. So anyway, I'm not going to play around with that anymore. Just suffice to say that if you want to, um, get it, get this part closer to the tissue, we're going to decrease the offset. If I want to have the tube longer, I'm going to increase the height. Um, so I think this looks pretty good. And so now, uh, all I need to do is I need to figure out how can I connect this to this? There are two different ways to do this. One is more complicated, but it allows us to do some more cool things in other types of cases. But I'm not looking for cool sophistication. I'm looking for simple because what I'm going to show you is the easiest way. I will describe if we map a nerve, we can mark a nerve wherever we want. And I could add a, basically a rounded tube and whatever S curve you know, directions I want to do, which is really cool if you want to make sort of like a wireframe type guide um, that are, you know, that's one of the ways we can do it is we can mark the curve, mark a, a mer design a nerve and have it curve and weave and wind all over the place. In this case, I don't want that. I just want some struts, one or two struts. And the easiest way to do that is to come up here to um, add an implant. Go to custom implant. Now, in this case, I, he already used a custom implant. Oh, that's him so Just... <laughs> Bowen, yeah. he needs something to drink, please. I can't pause right now because I can't remember the control to pause my recorder. Otherwise, I would. I'm sorry. I'm using a new screen recording software and don't want to screw it up. Um, so you always have to deal with that. Uh, anyway, if you weren't using a guided, you know, a custom implant, you know, you're just using your Blue Sky Bio fully got a kit and, you know, it might be a little more tricky. In this case, I could have just duplicated his, but it's simpler to come up to add a new implant, go to custom, change the dimensions to whatever. I'm going to call this eight millimeters for now. We'll see. Two and a half by two and a half is pretty reasonably strong. Um, and I'm just going to click on OK. Now I'm going to just put it wherever I want. Let's just slide it right there. Now, quick trick. Let's go ahead and rotate it so that it kind of follows the Oh, my project is saving, of course. I really should have remembered. I think it's like F8 on my keyboard, but if I do that, I don't want to accidentally pause. Okay, so, or stop my recording. All right, so I'm just going to kind of line it up with the orientation of the, the guide down here. You'll see why in a moment. I'm going to slide it out here a little bit. Now I'm going to rotate it a bit. Maybe this way, and then slam it down. So it's so the one end is intersecting the guide tube, not poking through, but intersecting it, and the other end is intersecting the guide itself. If I need it, I could always make it longer. Um, I don't care about you know this part right here. I can probably tip it in a bit more. I don't want it to interfere with the teeth on the intaglio of the guide. Unlikely, but you know that's why I set it at two and a half because this guide is. Um, uh, I is three millimeters. I mean, that's the default. I don't know if I lowered mine to two and a half, honestly, but so there you go. I got one strut and because since I did all those rotations and quick little, uh, adjustments to it, to the pit, and, well, you'll see, I can right click, click duplicate, and then just drag one, whichever one of the two, whether it's the duplicate or the original, and now just rotate it this way. And here we go. So that make sure it's not sticking on the inside of that guide tube. Slide it in here a little bit. Yeah, I do have to tweak the angle a little bit. You know, it is it is a mouth. It's not well, no, I don't. I just slide it in a little further. Okay. Let's go ahead and lock all these so that I don't end up with those little things popping up and you can look around. It's not on the inside of the guide or inside of the tube there. It's not in you know, impinging on my uh, blocked out model. And so there you go. Now you could add another strut in the middle if you wanted, if you really wanted this to be robust, but honestly, I think this is going to be fine. Um, so at this point, our guide, you know, we've got all the components. So I'm going to go ahead just for the visual sake, I'm going to turn off the original model, the undercut model. I'm also going to come over to the implant list and I'm going to turn off this implant, which is the one that is just for planning sake. So you know where the drill goes. 
And so now everything that is visible is what I want to be as one object. I want to just print this just like this. Some people would take this, export the pieces, bring them into Mesh Mixer and combine them. The reality is, although that seems like a good idea, it's just not necessary. All I actually need to do is come up here to File, Export Data, and normally, let's, let me get out of here for a second. Normally, if we're making a guide, all I have to do is hit Create uh, Save Circle Guide. It doesn't matter how many things are visible, it's only going to spit out this STL because that's the guide. This is a unique guide. There's extra components I need to attach to it. So I'm going to go back to the old school method of going File, Export Data, and I'm going to make sure that everything I want is checked. For right now, I've got the Surgical Guide. I've got the guide tube from that first implant, and I've got the actual implants from the other two. No guide tubes there, no abutments, the original implant is unchecked, so I've got everything I want. This little checkbox might be checked on your system, it may or may not, but it says export separate files to a folder. That would create a folder wherever I save it, and it's going to create them as, um, uh, it's going to, sorry, I'm blanking for a second. It's going to make multiple files in that folder so you could print independently. It's like you got a denture, you got a guide, you had a bunch of other objects. I don't want to do that. Most of the time I do, but this is a case where I don't. So I'm just going to ex leave that unchecked and export this as one STL with all these files. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I can pause this, see if I can find the settings menu, uh, hotkeys. Pause recording F8. So if I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause for a second because I don't know what this is going to save and just to save me from sharing any information. And here's my file right here. I just called it Apical Guide. So I'm going to wait for the software to open up. And then I'm going to print this entire uh, object as one. Now, it's technically an OBJ file, not an STL. That is uh, something I could have changed when I exported it, but I just I didn't. So um, it just I don't need to. So let's minimize this for a second. Let's grab this, drag it over top of there, and drag and drop it right in the software. So there should be one solid file, and here it is, okay? So now you can go ahead and you can um, print it however you want. You're gonna wanna use some, you know, some supports, of course. Uh, I usually rock it down by 45 degrees. That's just my go-to habit. Come over here, supports. Let's see what kind of supports it generates. Looks pretty good to me. Um, I mean, because honestly, this kind of is self supported at first by these tubes. And that one right there, you could go to heavier supports if you were, you know, a little bit iffy about it, but I think this would probably print just fine as is. And so that's your guide. And I hope that answered anyone's questions, uh, thoughts about this process. Uh, if you like this video, if this was helpful, make sure you check out my website, BaronGretterDDS.com, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel to see new videos and techniques and whatnot. All right. Thanks so much. Bye for now.